friends, and today we're going to talk about arcs. It is July, if you're unaware, and last July I did a video where I went through all of the arcs that I had for the upcoming year, and since it's July again, let's do it again. So I have several arcs, a whole heck a ton of them, only a few of my behind on, most of them are for the rest of the year and some for next year, um, but the purpose of this is so that you can see what I have coming up and if there's something that you would like a review vlog of or a dedicated video for that book, let me know and I would be happy to do that. Um, so just kind of let you know what's on my plate and also kind of gives you an idea of what's coming up in the future book release wise. So I am going to share my screen and we are going to start with Accomplished by Amanda Quain. This is a Georgie Darcy novel. Uh, I think it's kind of like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice but from uh, Georgiana Darcy's point of view. Um, it's the Pride and Prejudice retelling she deserves in Amanda Quain's Accomplished, a sparkling contemporary way featuring a healthy dose of marching band romance, endless banter, and Charles Bingley as a ripped frat boy, which honestly we all need. It is a truth universally acknowledged that Georgiana Darcy should have been expelled after the incident with Wickham Foster last year, at least if you ask any of her Pemberley Academy classmates. She may have escaped expulsion because of her family name, but she didn't escape the disappointment of her big brother Fitz, the scorn of the entire school, or it turns out Wickham's influence. But she's back for her junior year and she needs to prove to everyone, Fitzwilliam, her former friends, and maybe even herself, that she's more than just an embarrassment to the family name. How hard can it be to become the perfect Darcy. All she has to do is rebuild her reputation within the marching band, even if it kills her, forget about Wickham and his lies, no matter how tempting they still are, and distract Fitz Darcy, helicopter sibling extraordinaire, by getting him to fall in love with his classmate, Lizzie Bennett. Though this one might be difficult. Sure, it's a complicated plan, but so is being Darcy. With the help of her fellow bandmate, Avery, matchmaking ideas lifted straight from her favorite fanfics, and a whole lot of pancakes, Georgie is going to see every one of her plans through. But with the weight of being the perfect Darcy comes crashing down, Georgie will have to find her own way before she loses everything permanently, including the one guy who sees her for who she truly is. This is a Wednesday books, which you know I love. Uh, the published date is July 26th, so it's not technically out yet. Uh, so we're doing all right, but you know, are we going to get to it before then? That's a whole other question for a whole other day. Next we have Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. This is a St. Martin's Press and it is an adult romance. A reality star and a cupcake baking football player pretend to be a couple in order to save his bakery in this sweet and sexy romance from Jamie Wesley. Jada Townsend Matthews is the most reviled woman in America after turning down a proposal on a reality dating show. Ugh. When she comes home to lick her wounds, Jada finds herself working at San Diego's newest cupcake bakery, Sugar Blitz, alongside the uptight owner and professional football player Donna Vendell. When a reporter mistakenly believes Jada and Donovan are an item, they realize they can use the misunderstanding to their advantage to help the struggling bakery and rehabilitate Jada's image. Faking a relationship should be simple, but sometimes love is the most unexpected ingredient. Fake it till you bake it is a sweet confection of a novel, the perfect story to curl up with and enjoy with a cupcake on the side. Uh, this one's published date is June 21st, so obviously we'd be behind on that one. Not exactly what I had in mind by Kate Brooke. Um, this one's published date is June 28th, so again, we are behind, and it is being published by Dutton. Hazel and Alfie have just moved in together as roommates. They've also just slept together, which was either a catastrophic mistake or the best decision of their lives. They aren't quite sure yet. Whatever happens, they need to find a way to keep living together without too much drama or awkwardness, since neither of them can afford to move out of the apartment. Then Hazel's sister Emily and her wife Daria come for a visit, and Hazel and Alfie's feelings for each other are pushed to the side in the whirlwind of their arrival. Recently returned from abroad, Emily and Daria are excited for a new life in a new town and ready to start a family of their own. As the lives of Hazel, Alfie, Emily, and Daria collide, a complicated chain of events begins to bind them all together, bringing joy and heartache, hope and anxiety, and reshaping their relationships in ways that no one quite predicted. Warm, clever, and devastatingly relatable, not exactly what I had in mind, is by turns funny, heartbreaking, and a painfully true-to-life story about family, friends, and everything in between. 
The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This was a June 28th release as well, and it is by Berkeley. Florence Day is the ghostwriter for one of the most prolific romance authors in the industry, and she has a problem. After a terrible breakup, she no longer believes in love. It's as good as dead. When her new editor, a too handsome mountain of a man, won't give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call she never wanted to receive, and she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her beloved father. For 10 years, she's run from the town that never understood her, and even though she misses the sound of a warm southern night and her eccentric loving family and their funeral parlor, she can't bring herself to stay. Even with her father gone, it feels like nothing in this town has changed, and she hates it. Until she finds a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door, just as broad and infuriatingly handsome as ever, and he's just as confused about why he's there as she is. Romance is most certainly dead, but so is her new editor, and his unfinished business will have her second-guessing everything she's ever known about love stories. It sounds fantastic. Why haven't I picked it up yet? You tell me we'll both know. Um, but yes, very, very excited for this guy. Bet on it by Jody Slaughter. Pub date July 12th, just a little behind on this one. Technically, that's two days from now, but you'll be seeing this after that. It is a St. Martin's Press, which we know I love. Uh, the first time Aja Owens encounters the man of her dreams, she's having a panic attack in the frozen food section of the Piggly Wiggly. That line is probably why I requested this book, let's be honest. The second time, he's being introduced to her as her favorite bingo buddy's semi-estranged grandson. From there, all it takes is for one game for her to realize that he's definitely going to be a problem. And if there's anything she already has a surplus of, it's problems. In Walker Abbott's mind, there are only two worthwhile things in Greenbelt, South Carolina. A peach cobbler at his old favorite diner and his ailing grandmother. Dragging himself back after more than a decade away, he's counting down the days until Graham heals and he can get back to his real life, far away from the trauma inside of those city limits. Just when he thinks his plan is solid, enter Aja to shake everything up. A hastily made bingo-based sex pact is supposed to keep this thing between them from getting out of hand, especially when submitting to their feelings means disrupting their carefully balanced lives but emotions are just like bingo callers they refuse to be ignored jody slaughter's bet on it is a heart-stopping fun emotional romance that will have readers fallen in love until long after the last page is turned a panic attack in the frozen food section of piggly wiggly you know that had to have been why i was like yes please uh witches of peculiar double double twins and trouble by luna graves this is a mid-grade, if you can't tell, and the pub date is July 19th, which I believe is the day you're watching this, maybe. Maybe not. July 19th is the day that I published the one last year. You'll be seeing this a few days before then. Okay. There are monsters among us, and they're just trying to survive middle school. In peculiar Pennsylvania, the supernatural kids attend, yikes! Yvette I. Coffin's exceptional school for supernatural students, run by Yvette herself. From goblins to ghosts to werewolves to witches, the students learn the ins and outs of doling out the scares and blending in with the humans they live among. Mostly the system works, but there's occasionally a young monster who shakes things up. A pubescent werewolf who displays some suspicious body hair on the community basketball court, or a scatterbrained ghost who goes through a door instead of opening it. But Peculiar has never seen a potential PR disaster quite like the Maleficent twins. While Bella and Donna's magic is powerful, they don't quite have a handle on their witchcraft yet. Can they get through the sixth grade without turning the mailman into a toad, burning down the town with hellfire, or turning all the liquid on earth into cherry lemonade jello? I mean, that is a definite question right there, let me tell you. How could you not want to read this? The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This one is a St. Martin's Press. Pub date is July 19th as well. A lot of words here. She's got his back. Hannah Brooks looks more like a kindergarten teacher than somebody who could kill you with a wine bottle opener or a ballpoint pen or a dinner napkin. But the truth is, she's an executive protection agent, aka bodyguard, and she just got hired to protect superstar actor Jack Stapleton from his middle-aged corgi breeding stalker. All right. He's got her heart. Jack Stapleton's a household name, captured by paparazzi on beaches the world over, famous for, among other things, rising out of the waves in all manner of clingy board shorts and glistening like a Roman deity. But a few years back, in the wake of a family tragedy, he dropped from the public eye and went off the grid. When Jack's mom gets sick, he comes home to the family's Texas ranch to help out. Only one catch. He doesn't want his family to know about his stalker or the bodyguard thing. And so Hannah, against her will and her better judgment, finds herself pretending to be Jack's girlfriend as a cover, even though her ex, like a jerk, 
says no one will believe it. Hannah hardly believes it herself, but the more time she spends with Jack, the more real it all starts to seem. And there lies the heartbreak, because it's easy for Hannah to protect Jack, but for protecting her own long-neglected heart, that's the hardest thing she's ever done. This sounds like it's straight from a Hallmark, and I'm very very excited. Long Story Short by Serena Kaler. This is a Wednesday books. It releases July 26th. Growing up homeschooled in Berkeley, California, Beatrice Quinn has always dreamed of discovering new mathematical challenges at Oxford University. She always thought the hardest part would be getting in, not convincing her parents to let her go. But while math has always made sense to Beatrice, making friends is a problem she hasn't been able to solve. Before her parents will send her halfway across the world, she has to prove she won't spend the next four years hiding in the library. The Compromise, the Connecticut Shakespearean Summer Academy, and a detailed list of teenage milestones to check off. If Beatrice wants to live out her Oxford dream, she has to survive six weeks in the role of normal teenager first. Unfortunately, hearts and hormones don't follow any equations. When she's adopted by a group of eclectic theater kids and immediately makes an enemy of the popular and annoyingly gorgeous British son of the camp founders, Beatrice quickly learns that relationships are trickier than calculus. With her future on the line, this girl genius stumbles through illicit parties, double dog dares, and more than her fair share of Shakespeare. But before the final curtain falls, will Beatrice realize there's more to life than what she can find in the pages of a book? Blood Like Fate by Lizelle Sanberry. This is a Simon & Schuster and also part of the Margaret K. McElderry imprint. Uh, the release date on this is August 9th. We are not going to talk about Blood Like Fate, though, because it is the second book in a series. Um, so we're going to talk about Blood Like Magic, which you can see right there. Uh, you probably can't see it as far away as the screen is, but it is indeed right there. Since Blood Like Fate is a sequel, I will read you the synopsis of Blood Like Magic, which is the first book in the series. It is after years of waiting for her calling, a trial every witch must pass in order to come into their powers. The one thing Voya Thomas didn't expect was to fail. When Voya's ancestor gives her an unprecedented second chance to complete her calling, she agrees, and then is horrified when her task is to kill her first love. And this time, failure means every Thomas witch will be stripped of their magic. Voya is determined to save her family's magic no matter the cost. The problem is, Voya has never been in love. So for her to succeed, she'll first have to find the perfect guy, and fast. Fortunately, a genetic matchmaking program has just hit the market. Her plan is to join the program, fall in love, and complete her task before the deadline. What she doesn't count on is being paired with the infuriating Luke. How can she fall in love with a guy who seemingly wants nothing to do with her? With mounting pressure from her family, Voya is caught between her morality and her duty to her bloodline. If she wants to save her heritage and Luke, she'll have to find something her ancestor wants more than blood. And in witchcraft, blood is everything. Um, I rated the first book a five out of five stars. So obviously I am very excited to read the second book and also Lizelle's a friend. So nothing like reading a friend's book. We then have Stay Awake by Megan Golden. This publishes on August 9th. It is a St. Martin's Press. Liv Reese wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is or how she got there, but she's dropped off at a door of her brownstone. A stranger answers, a stranger who claims to live in her apartment. She reaches for her phone to call for help, only to discover it's missing. In its place is a bloodstained knife. Her hands are covered in scribbled messages, like graffiti on her skin. Stay awake. Two years ago, Liv was thriving as a successful writer for a trending magazine. Now she's lost and disoriented in a New York City that looks nothing like what she remembers. Catching a glimpse of the local news, she's horrified to see reports of a crime scene where the victim's blood has been used to scrawl a message across a window, similar to the message that's inked on her hands. What did she do last night? And why does she remember nothing from the past two years? Liv finds herself on the run for a crime she doesn't remember committing, but there's someone who does know exactly what she did, and they'll do anything to make her forget. Permanently. A complex thriller that unfolds at a breakneck speed, Stay Awake will keep you up all night. Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. This one comes out August 16th and is a Berkeley. PhD candidate Phoebe Walsh has always been obsessed with true crime. She's even analyzing the genre in her dissertation, if she can manage to finish writing it. It's hard to find the time when she spends the summer in Florida cleaning out her childhood home, dealing with her obnoxiously good-natured brother, and grappling with the complicated feelings of mourning a father she hadn't had a relationship with for years. It doesn't help that she's low-key convinced that the new neighbor, Sam Dennings, is a serial killer. He may dress business casual by day, but at night he's clearly up to something. 
It's not long before Phoebe realizes that Sam might be something much scarier, a genuinely nice guy who can pierce her armor to reach her vulnerable heart. I mean, yes, absolutely. This one's a funny one. Uh, the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I was, I requested this and was denied and then Berkeley sent me a copy. So, sure. I requested it because, you know, it's got the word witch in it and was promptly denied an arc and then got an email last week from Berkeley going, hey, would you like this arc? And I went, uh, yeah, I sure would. I sure would. Uh, this is publishing August 23rd and again is a Berkeley as one of the few witches in Britain, Mika Moon knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down, and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. And as an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules, with one exception, an online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will take it seriously. But someone does. An unexpected message arrives, begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches how to control their magic. It breaks all of the rules, but Mika goes anyway and is immediately tangled up in the lives and secrets of not only three charges, but also an absent archaeologist, a retired actor, two long-suffering caretakers, and Jamie, the handsome and prickly librarian of Nowhere House, who would do anything to protect the children, and as far as he's concerned, a stranger like Mika is a threat, an irritatingly appealing threat. As Mika begins to find her place at Nowhere House, the thought of belonging somewhere begins to feel like a real possibility, but magic isn't the only danger in the world, and when peril comes knocking at the door, Mika will need to decide whether to risk everything to protect a found family she didn't know she was looking for. You know I love found families, you know I love witches, and you know I love romances, so hey. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This is coming out August 23rd. And it is a Berkeley as well. Like an avenging purple-haired Jedi bringing balance to the mansplained universe. I'm not even going to try to pronounce B's last name right now. B lives in a simple code. What would Marie Curie do? If NASA offered her the lead on a neuroengineering project, a literal dream come true after years scraping by on the crumbs of academia, Marie would accept without hesitation. Duh. But the mother of modern physics never had to co-lead with Levi Ward. Sure, Levi is attractive in a tall, dark, and piercing eyes kind of way, and sure, he caught her in his powerfully corded arms like a romance novel hero when she accidentally damseled in distress in her first day in the lab, but Levi made his feelings for be very clear in grad school. Arch enemies work best employed in their own galaxies far, far away. Now her equipment is missing, the staff is ignoring her, and B finds her floundering career in somewhat of a pickle. Perhaps it's her occipital cortex playing tricks on her, but B could swear she can see Levi softening into an ally. Backing her plays, seconding her ideas, devouring her with those eyes, and the possibilities have all her neurons firing. But when it comes time to actually make a move and put her heart on the line, there's only one question that matters. What will B do? Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. This published date is September 6th. It is also a Berkeley. Billy, Mary Alice, Helen, and Natalie have worked for the museum, an elite network of assassins for 40 years. Now their talents are considered old school and no one appreciates what they have to offer in an age that relies more on technology than people skills. When the foursome is sent to an all-expensive paid vacation to mark their retirement, they are targeted by one of their own. Only the board, the top-level members of the museum, can order the termination of field agents, and the women realize they've been marked for death. Now to get out alive, they have to turn against their own organization, relying on experience and each other to get the job done, knowing that working together is the secret to their survival. They're about to teach the board what it really means to be a woman and a killer of a certain age. You know it sounds fantastic. Witchful Thinking by Celeste Martin. Uh, pub date on this one is September 27th, and it is Forever Grand Central Publishing, comma, forever. Not one that I've heard of, but a lot of words in there. Lucinda Carraway loves living in Freya Grove, the mystic seaside town where charms, hexes, and magical beings of all kinds are the norm. She spends her days teaching high school history and her nights reading tea leaves and tending to her conjure garden. It's a good life, but she can't stop wishing for more. And so one night, that wish turns into a spell, and suddenly Lucy can't say no. 
not to a public karaoke performance, not to running a 10K, and most alarmingly, not to her high school crush, Alexander Dwyer, who needs her help unjinxing his new house, which just happens to be right across the street from hers. Alex has spent the last 10 years traveling the world on adventures Lucy has only ever dreamed of, and he's planning to leave again as soon as his house is safe to sell. But until Lucy can unhex herself, she and Alex are stuck together. And with so much magic in the air, maybe the next spell Lucy casts will be the one that convinces him to stay. Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn. This is October 4th, and it is a random house. Ground books for young readers. After the death of her mom, screw cancer, 17-year-old Cicely Ellis goes to live with her estranged grandmother, a celebrated author whose Victorian mansion is as creepy as the murder mysteries she writes. On the surface, life is utterly ordinary in the California coastal town, until the homecoming queen is murdered and she's not Seaview's first pretty dead queen. With a copycat killer on the loose, Cecilia throws herself into the investigation, determined to crack the case like the heroines of her grandmother's books. But the more Cecilia digs into the town's secrets, the more she worries that her own mystery might not have a storybook ending. Um, this one, if you are interested in, is a read now, so you can go and read it now. Caitlin is also a fellow author tuber, as is Alexa Dunn, if you don't know, as is Lizelle Sanbury. There's quite a few of those on here. Um, but Her Buried Lives by Caitlin L. Duncan. This one's published date is October 13th. Can the sins of the past dictate your future? For as long as she can remember, Jenny Miller has experienced intense intrusive visions. Plagued by graphic mental images of death and harm, Jenny is constantly on edge, always fighting to stay on this plane of reality until she gets one chance to learn if anyone else in her family suffered the same way. When Jenny and her mother travel to a rural town to sell their legacy home, evidence of the past surrounds them and forces concealed secrets to surface. But the more Jenny digs, the more she entrenches herself in a sordid past. Soon after finding a hidden journal filled with disturbing messages, a local goes missing and the suspicions of the town sheriff turn toward Jenny and her mother. To prove their innocence, Jenny needs to come face to face with a killer who is more like her than she ever wanted. With the clock ticking, can Jenny withstand her visions long enough to uncover the truth and save herself? For fans of deeply layered thrillers by Alice Feeney, Lisa Jewell, and Catherine Ryan Howard. So if you're interested, again, this one is up on NetGalley as a read now, which means you don't have to request it. You can just go in and pick it and read it and review it. A Cosmic Kind of Love by Samantha Young. This is published date is October 18th and it is a Berkeley. When event planner Hallie Goodman receives party inspiration material from a bride of her latest wedding project, the last thing she expects to find is a collection of digital videos from Darcy's ex-boyfriend. Hallie knows it's wrong to keep watching these personal videos, but the guy is cute, funny, and an astronaut on the International Space Station to boot. She's only human and it's not long until she starts sending emails and video diaries to his discontinued NASA address. Since they're bouncing back, there's no way anyone will ever be able to see them, right? Christopher Ortiz is readjusting to life on Earth and being constantly in the shadow of his deceased older brother. When a friend from NASA's IT department forwards him the emails and video messages Hallie has sent, he can't help but notice how much her sense of humor and pink hair make his heart race. Separated by screens, Hallie and Chris are falling in love with each other one transmission at a time, but can they make their star-crossed romance work when they each learn the other's baggage. A Very Merry Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. This one comes out November 1st. It's a Berkeley. This is the fifth book in the Bromance Book Club series. One, two, three, four. Yes, fifth book in the Bromance Book Club series. The series follows a group of men who are professional athletes, um, business owners, hockey players. This one follows our musician uh, Colton. And basically, the series is about the guys using romance novels to help them with their love lives. I do recommend you start out at the beginning of the series with um, the Bromance Book Club. And um, it's a very good series. I'm very excited to read this one as well. I'm going to wait a little bit on this one because it is Christmas themed. So I probably will read it closer to the release date. But excited. Uh, the next one is one where the Ark Gods were very kind to me. And I got The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Uh, it releases November 8th. It is a Macmillan Tor Forge, technically a Tortine. Hemlock Falls isn't like other towns. You won't find it on a map. Your phone won't work here and the forest outside town might just kill you. Winnie Wednesday wants nothing more than to join the Luminaries, the ancient order that protects Winnie's town and the rest of humanity from the monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. Ever since her father was exposed as a witch and a traitor, Winnie and her family have been shunned, but on her 16th birthday, she can take the deadly luminary hunter trials and prove herself true and loyal and restore her family's good name. 
or die trying. But in order to survive, Winnie enlists the help of one person who can help her train, Jay Friday, resident bad boy and Winnie's ex-best friend. While Jay might be the most promising new hunter in Hemlock Falls, he also seems to know more about the nightmares in the forest than he should. Together, he and Winnie will discover a danger lurking in the forest no one in Hemlock Falls is prepared for. Not all monsters can be slain, and not all nightmares are confined to the dark. Uh, if you remember... And Susan Dennard doing the Sue's Your Own Adventure story, which was essentially a Twitter story that went on for a really long time. Um, the Luminaries is based off of some, technically the Sue's Your Own Adventure was based off of stories from the Luminaries, uh, not the other round way, but um, yes. And the last book that we have is Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. Uh, this one is November 29th. It is from Wednesday Books. It's been two years since Maya dumped her cheating ex-boyfriend Jordy, and she still can't escape him. His sister married the crown prince of a minor European country, and in the lead up to the wedding, he captured hearts globally as the eligible younger brother. So when Maya receives an invitation to be a contestant on Second Chance Romance, a new reality show in which the now famous Jordy will redate his ex-girlfriends in an effort to find the one that got away, she isn't interested. That is, until she realized she can use this opportunity to exact her revenge. If she can make it to the finale, she can reject Jordy and publicly break his heart. As far as Maya's concerned, it's payback with interest, just what a guy like Jordy deserves. But when she gets to the set, she's confronted with the one person she hasn't accounted for, Skye, the beautiful, charismatic girl Jordy cheated on Maya with. How is she supposed to live with this girl for six weeks, sharing bunk beds for crying out loud? Except, of course, there's more to Sky than she l lets most people see. Sky has her own reasons for being careful with her heart and might be more willing to take Maya's side than it initially seems. If they can sustain their reluctant alliance and keep their unexpected chemistry from interfering, they might just have a chance to take Jordy down. You know I'm excited. Like, I love Sophie's works. So that's it. That's all of the arcs that we currently have. Uh, so let me know in the comments below which ones you would like a like a review blog or a full review video or if there's any that you're excited for. If there's any that you also have an arc of that you'd like to buddy read, let me know. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!